we have another iPhone 8 Plus here with the battery stuck at 1%. You see that? Oh. Let's see. One. Oh, come on, man. Let's see, can you see it now? 1%. Stuck at 1% after DIY screen repair. It is becoming more and more popular. Um, and what is happening is. Let me tear this sucker down and show you guys what's happening. All right, so what people are doing are is um, as they're disconnecting the battery, probably not even the battery. It's probably the display connector that's really the problem here. But as they put as they're disconnecting it, whatever they're watching a YouTube video and they stick their spudger here. I'm not sure what happened there, but uh, my video cut out. Anyways, uh, I always disconnect the battery using my fingernail, and I just kind of pry up like this. And then with these connectors, I just I normally just from from the from the loudspeaker side, just lift up with your fingernails, and then this uh, front camera connector. I use my spudger and just kind of get under it and pop it up like that. Okay, that's how I do it. Um, uh, but I think everybody watching YouTube are probably is probably using some sort of spudger or some sort of tool to pry these things up. So what's going on is let me I'm gonna get some IPA on the end of my Q-tip here, and I'm gonna. Just get this foam up. Uh, I'm actually gonna remove these two as well, and then I'm gonna pick it up. I'm gonna take the foam out because this phone is not quite waterproof yet, so I don't think this foam is gonna help too much, at least. So there you go. There's the missing transistor. That is the problem, and we can actually reuse this one because it looks like it's still intact. So I guess I can't really call this battery pry damage because it's really probably display connector or pry damage. It's probably what it is. I don't think it's actually the battery connector that's causing this issue. Um, although, uh, oh, there it is. Okay, I thought I lost my transistor. Okay, there you go. So this one might be a little bit easier. Um, usually it's missing a pad. You know what? I'm not even going to tear the rest of that up because it's. I should be good without it. Uh, well, you know what? I probably won't be good without it because I'm just going to melt. Everything's going to melt. So I'll just take it off. Everything's going to melt anyways. Once I get, once I get to it, it's going to melt. So I'll just take all the foam off. 99% isopropyl alcohol. You can use 91% if you want, but uh, I'd stick with the more pure alcohol so that there's no water on your logic board. 91% is 9% water. Okay, uh, the foam is gone. Um, so, people are lifting this display connector and popping this transistor off. And uh, you can always confirm it by using your multimeter in diode mode. Uh, put the red end to ground and the black end to these two points right here and you should these are the two battery sensing lines and you should get right around 0.7 something this one's OL 0.739 so you should get it right around 0.73 right around there okay if you get OL then something's missing most likely that transistor right so we can see what's wrong with this thing um, and uh, we're just going to reuse this transistor since it's still okay alright but before we do that we're going to remove this uh, this loudspeaker here because um, from Sanjeev's experience it melts <laughs> which doesn't it still works and stuff it's just not a pleasant sight uh, to return something like this to the customer when the loudspeaker is melted so so I'll show you a crotch shot again some of you guys like that um, so I think it's just six, maybe six, um, six screws is all it is, and that'll get you to remove the loudspeaker. It's fairly simple to do. You need a good tri wing screwdriver. Take this little clip off right here. 
and this thing should just pop right off no problems just like that alright see that so you definitely want to take that off and then I use capped on tape everywhere uh, just because I don't like melting stuff uh, also you want to take the um, you want to take the sim card sim tray out too especially if there's a sim card in there I feel like I'm saying the same things over and over in all my videos but it's alright so I'm just going to cap on it. Cap on is a heat resistant uh, tape. Um, it is also going to deflect the heat all the way up to your hands. So your hands are going to burn, but that's the price we pay to protect the logic board. All right. So pretty much this is protected. You don't want to cover it too too much. You want to be able to get a little heat in there, uh, but you want to direct the heat. Oh, no. See, I kind of messed it up already. Um, I'm not sure why my recordings keep stopping like this. Um, hopefully, I didn't lose anything. Probably need to restart this screencast o matic that I'm using. Alright, so I also like using uh, a penny. Whoever my penny is. I'm just going to stick a penny over here. Doesn't really matter. Um, and then. I'm just going to stick some metal over here so that it kind of absorbs some of the heat, alright? Uh, and that's, uh oh, did I lose my, dang. Oh, I definitely lost my transistor now. Sucks. Oh, I had it all good, and then I put it on top of there, I think, and now it's gone. That sucks, man. Let's see if it, see if it comes out. Nope. Man, I was all set. I was going to use that same damn thing and then it's gone. Is this it right here? Is this it? Let's see if this is it or not. Oh, I think that is it. Is it? Is it? Haha, we're in business. We got lucky. Okay, so. Okay, so. Put our heat sinks back. Um, let's tin this first. So let's get a little closer. We're gonna get um, a little flux on the tip of our tweezers. Just a little bit is enough. You don't have to do too much. And then um, you really want to wet your soldering iron with some 6337, hopefully. And just, you just want to tin it just a little bit like that. Okay, and yeah, I think it's probably better to tin, tin this little transistor too, just so that it makes it a little bit easier to flow once we uh, heat this mother. So this will make it tack on a little bit easier once we uh, get it going here. Uh oh. Okay, that's good. So now we're gonna have to use extreme heat. Uh, most people aren't gonna be comfortable with this, and this is where we come in. Um, but yes, you need a hot air rework station, and if you're not careful, you're gonna burn everything. So I would not do this unless you are a trained professional. So I'm at 400 degrees Celsius with an airflow of 17. I'm holding my nozzle about an inch away. That is very important. I'm holding my nozzle about an inch away. And my fingers are scorching right now. Uh, I'm going to use some different tweezers. Um, and I'm just going to kind of let it sit in place by itself. So the solder is going to melt. Usually it takes about 45 seconds or so. Maybe a little longer. Um, you want to do a slow melt, that's what I like doing. And if you're not careful, you're going to melt the connector, so... Most people don't feel comfortable doing this by themselves. I don't blame them. But once you see the connect, the uh, solder melt, it's going to turn shiny. And that's kind of what you're looking for. And the ground point is going to take a little bit longer than the other point, so you can kind of push it if you want and you definitely want some flux on there so uh, I wouldn't put too much though because 
you're gonna have to remove it later on but it's enough that it's wet and then just kind of let it go okay so I saw it go shiny and then it is dull again which means that it is liquefied and solidified and uh, to test it you can kind of give it a little nudge make sure it's solid and remove all your heat sinks um, be careful with this black tape over here uh, I usually can't get this up but without ripping it but I'm gonna try this time Let's see so the black tape Uh, I'm gonna try to not rip it. That black tape right there, it's not even a big deal, but it's just unsightly when you return it back to the customer and they're like, what'd you do to it? See, it's already bubbling. Okay, so that is intact one piece. Um, again, let's go back to the isopropyl alcohol and let's kind of clean this a little bit. The idea is that the, ice, the alcohol is gonna dry and uh, evaporate and uh, you will no longer see it so that cleans the excess flux off and then one last check is you can do diode mode on your multimeter and uh, red side to ground black side to each pin 0 0.70 and 0 0.70 so we are good to go um, so let's just put this back together and I think we should be back in business I think hopefully Alexa is the dumbest thing ever, man. I just start, ah, it's the worst. Google's so much better. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but Alexa was asking me if I want to listen to the song Zero. No, I don't want to listen to the stupid song Zero, stupid. I didn't say, I didn't say I want to listen to the song. Anyways, I'm not a big fan of Apple or Amazon anymore. I'm not a big fan because we were selling some stuff on Amazon and uh, a user complained that it was in, inauthentic. Um, there's actually a big article on it right now, but the user claimed that the item was inauthentic. So I sent all the documents saying where we bought it from and stuff like that. And, and uh, Amazon ended up banning banning my account. And they, they kept sending these generic responses saying, oh, that your document is insu insufficient. And without any, you know, I was like, so what? What did you want? What else did you want me to send? And they just kept responding with these generic things, and and uh, and then they ended up just closing my account, withheld withheld the money uh, for months because they had to wait for all the items to clear, whatever their 90-day policy is, and uh, and that was the end of Amazon seller. Um, so you know, as a bit, if you're a business relying on Amazon to to make uh, sales, uh, Amazon can take that away in a heartbeat. So it's not a good idea to rely on Amazon. You know what? It's not a good idea to rely on anybody, really. Um, I think Google is a Google SEO is a big thing, but. Uh, but uh, yeah, back in the days, people were relying on Google SEO, and all of a sudden they released the Panda update, and, and now they have um, probably real-time SEO updates. It's probably not real-time. It's probably more like eh, hourly, maybe daily. So that changed. That anyways, that killed a lot of business. The other thing Amazon did was they uh, reduced uh, affiliate associate fees last March. Um, they just said, "Hey, we're gonna stop paying you guys eight percent or whatever it is, four to eight percent, and we're just gonna cut it back. Nothing you could do about it, and boom, instantly. Probably a lot of these sites like Retail Me Not, uh, Ebates, they probably just saw at least a, probably a thirty percent drop in revenues overnight just because Amazon said so. So that's the danger of relying on another business for uh, for." Um, your sales but you know 
if you didn't have them, then there would be no sales. So <laughs> uh, that's why people. That's why if you if you follow SEO specialists, they always tell you to build a build a newsletter, um, build your own customer base, and just uh, rely on other sites to a certain extent. But I think the underlying goal is to have your own database customers. Um, okay. This is the hardest part right here, putting that connector back. I think, okay. Uh, okay. I think we are almost in business. Uh, Okay, we're in business. Uh, let's re let's boot this mother up and see if it. So, I'm gonna plug this into my ammeter. Can't really see my ammeter, but I'm gonna plug it into my ammeter, and I'm getting point uh, one amp, one amp draw on this. Battery is dead. It says it's dead. So it works, but it says battery dead, but it's definitely drawing one amp. So I think this is good. Um, I mean, diode mode checked out fine, so. Um, I'm probably just going to let this charge up to 100 and see what happens. And but you guys don't need to stand here to watch that. Uh, you can just assume that this repair is golden. And then we will call it a day. All right. Um, so that's it, really. This repair. Um, you got you still have loop disease on the seven seven plus. Uh, baseband issue was was a pain in the ass. But uh, at least somebody found a solution for data recovery on that one. Um, so that was a bonus. Um, the 8 plus, this is a pretty big problem. Um, what else on the 8 plus? What else have we seen on the 8 plus, Sanjeev? Anything? Not a whole lot, right? So maybe maybe they're not quite coming in yet, but they will be coming in sometime, I guess, at some point. And then, you know, you got the X, which is like, gosh, pain in the butt to, I don't even know if it's repairable or not, so, and I'm hoping that the new iPhones, they're, they're not like the X, which they probably will be, uh, dual layered, all that garbage, uh, man, it's going to be a nightmare, but, um, yeah, you just got to stay ahead of the game somehow, I don't know how we're going to do that, but, um, so, yep. So anyways, that's the end of this repair. Uh, this is probably the fifth one that I've recorded. Um, so this may be the last one I record uh, because it's going to get a little bit redundant after that. So, alright. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching my videos on YouTube. I just want to talk to you about our online video course hosted at Udemy.com. If you go to microsoldering.com and click on store, uh, while it loads, click on micro soldering the full curriculum. As you can see, we have discounted the price to $99.99. And if you click on this, you'll see that it contains three and a half hours of online video instruction, instructions on how to get started in micro soldering. And we're also offering a certificate now. So after you complete the course, just email us at support at microsoldering.com and we will send you a certificate, a signed certificate with your name on it that you can display on in your store if you want. Um, again, three and a half hours of video instruction. Um, we also have a forum now which you can post your questions and we will answer it as quickly as possible. It's a free forum, no charge for it. Um, the course is $99.99. Uh, just click on this link and that will give you the discount because if you go through Udemy.com directly it's going to be $149.99. So thanks for watching. If you want to learn how to do this stuff then go buy this online course. Thanks. Bye.